number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. In line with India's outreach efforts towards the neighbors, New Delhi recently hosted Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli and extended a $100 million line of credit to the archipelago nation. The two countries have been closely working since Soli took office and have pledged to further strengthen their ties. Observers believe that strong India-Maldives ties are also the need of the hour, especially in the face of aggressive Chinese expansionism. In the backdrop of the rapidly evolving global geopolitical dynamics and their ripple effects in the Indian Ocean, New Delhi hosted the President of the Maldives, Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, in capital New Delhi. After a meeting with the island nation's president, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that India will extend an additional $100 million line of credit to the Maldives. The two leaders inaugurated Greater Male Connectivity Project as the first concrete for the same was poured. India also announced to extend financial support for 200 additional social housing units besides the 4,000 units, the project for which commenced on Tuesday. हमने आज ग्रेटर माले में 4000 सोशल हाउसिंग यूनिट्स उसके निर्माण के प्रोजेक्ट का रिव्यू भी किया मुझे यह घोषणा करते हुए प्रसन्नता है कि हम इसके अतिरिक्त 2000 सोशल हाउसिंग यूनिट्स के लिए भी फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट देंगे हमने 100 मिलियन डॉलर की अतिरिक्त लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट देने का निर्णय भी किया है India in February 2021 undertook to develop, support and maintain a Coast Guard base for the Maldivian National Defence Force at Uthuru Thila Falwa Toll. The Indian and Maldivian governments maintain that the Uthuru Thila Falu facility will help Maldives surveil its waters better. Both sides have said that joint endeavour was being pursued in order to enable the Maldivian government to protect their maritime interests on its own, thereby enhancing its sovereignty. The current government of Maldives, unlike the previous dispensation, which, according to several experts, was turning into Chinese stooge, has adopted the India First policy. To wean Maldives away from Chinese loans, India extended its financial assistance and has undertaken massive infrastructure projects. India has also tried to ensure that Maldives is self-sufficient in protecting its waters and thereby its sovereignty. For the Maldives Surakshabal, there are 24 Vahan and a naval boat. We have Maldives 61 islands में पुलिस सुविधाओं के निर्माण में भी सहयोग करेंगे। Meanwhile, Soli said the two Asian countries look forward to strengthening maritime security and strive toward climate action. Lying near strategic shipping lanes in the Indian Ocean, Maldives is critical in the battle for influence between India and China, which have repeatedly clashed along their disputed Himalayan border in recent years. Climate action could only be achieved by international cooperation. Prime Minister and I discussed the issue of terrorism. We both reiterated a firm commitment to the work against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and strengthen cooperation to enhance maritime safety and security in the Indian Ocean region. New Delhi and Malay have come closer in recent times despite both overt and covert political games at play to undermine the relationship. Observers say any form of opposition stir in the Maldives is being created by a third country. But this hasn't been able to deter its leadership from deepening partnership with India. 
India and Maldives say they will continue to have a good relationship and will work together with Vigor to provide additional impetus to ties in coming times. Moving on, Pakistan economy is in tatters and it is staring at the duplication of a crisis that its South Asian neighbor Sri Lanka continues to reel under even today. But what has led Pakistan to where it is today? Is it the deep state of Pakistan army responsible for the prevailing plight? Or the situation has worsened owing to political incapacities of successive governments? Or is it the immoral nexus of debased army generals and the civilian leadership that has seemingly pushed Pakistan into a perennial position of penury? We bring your report. Seventy-five years of independent Pakistan polity have been tumultuous and turbulent. Oscillating between military rule and civilian governments, the country, till date, has failed to witness even one complete five-year tenure by any one of its prime ministers. Far from the lofty ideals based on which the Pakistan state was founded, the constant tug-of-war between the army and self-serving politicians has pushed the Islamic Republic towards a bleak future. The last few years in Pakistan's timeline have been unstable, with constant toppling and reinstating of governments, which have led to serious economic uncertainty and investor anxiety. With depleting foreign currency reserves and rising inflation, the Islamic Republic is now on the brink of economic collapse. Inflation in Pakistan rose to 21.3% in June this year, the highest since December of 2008, when inflation stood at 23.3%. Fuel prices have skyrocketed, and people are paying as much as 248 Pakistani rupees for one liter of petrol, and 263 Pakistani rupees for a liter of diesel. लाजमी सी बात है अब महंगाई बढ़ती चली जाएगी, बेरोजगारी होती चली जाएगी, लोग मर रहे हैं, लोग खुद कुछ ही कर रहे हैं, तो थोड़ा सा हमारे इकबरानों को सोचना चाहिए कि डॉलर पे कंट्रोल करें. According to the United Nations Development Program, Pakistan is facing a debt in excess of 250 billion USD. This massive debt is the outcome of many compounding factors, including the decline of the Pakistani rupee and investments of millions of USD for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor (CPEC). Further, the low ranking by international rating agencies, coupled with the grey listing of Pakistan by the Financial Action Task Force, has kept foreign investors away from the country. The crisis is a direct consequence of the absence of any stable government in Pakistan and constant interventions of the unaccountable Pakistani army into matters of civilian life. The army's interference in the country's non-military affairs ultimately led to societal instability and the severe economic slowdown the country is currently facing. Additionally, repeated and continuous government mismanagement and corruption have further added to the country's crisis. Because of political instability and because of this war between the military and the political establishment, that is the root cause as to why there is so much of misgovernance and policy paralysis in Pakistan. Pakistan currently is not even able to secure a bailout package from the International Monetary Fund. The IMF's conditions, which include measures like removal of subsidies by the Pakistani state, are proving too costly for Islamabad, and it is looking for other options. However, those options for a bailout are fast dwindling. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves have depleted to a critical level, and the country has few weeks of import cover remaining to bring essential commodities into the country for its smooth functioning. Pakistan, day by day, appears to be ever closely following Sri Lanka's path into political and economic collapse. Moving on. While the economic crisis in Afghanistan has taken a toll on the lives and livelihood of common citizens, the minorities who were already marginalized are bearing the major brunt. Six who have repeatedly been attacked by the fundamentalist forces residing inside the country continue to seek shelter outside the war torn nation. India, the home to majority of Sikhs around the world, continues to facilitate their evacuation and in line with the same, it welcomed another batch of Sikhs seeking refuge in the country. Have a look. A 
It's been a year since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan. And contrary to what the group promised, the de facto government has failed to provide any sense of security to its people. Social, political and economic aspects of the society have been massively hit. Amidst all this comes the safety of those whose numbers have already declined to a handful. The Sikh minority, which is already subjected to different forms of violence and ostracism, is now desperate to flee the country. Scores of them have already migrated to different countries, with the majority seeking a refuge in India. Recently, a batch of 30 Afghan Sikhs landed in New Delhi. The Afghan Sikhs, including women and children, were seen reuniting with their friends and family outside the New Delhi airport as the refugees sought to seek shelter and settle down on Indian grounds. <laughs> इसीलिए अफगानिस्तान को छोड़ते नहीं है हालात से आराम इससे पहले जो हालात थे जो अशरफ गनी था उसमें भी इसी तरह हालात थे आज भी वही हालात थे ये खास इसलिए ये कर रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट को बदनाम के लिए सिखों को टारगेट करना गैर मजहब लोगों को टारगेट करना उन लोगों का मिशन है The Sikh community, like other religious minorities, has been the continual target of violence in Afghanistan. Sikhs are a religious minority in largely Muslim Afghanistan, comprising around 300 family members before the fall of the country to the Taliban. And since the attacks on Sikh shrine in capital Kabul were carried out by the Islamic State, their fears have compounded several times. People who have managed to flee Afghanistan, which they say has grown extremely unsafe and hostile to them, rude that minorities were being persecuted and their shrines were being destroyed in Afghanistan. Prior to the Taliban takeover last year, Hindus and Sikhs in Afghanistan numbered only approximately 600. Reports indicate that the number has dramatically decreased. Those remaining have been the subject of targeted attacks predominantly by Sunni radical groups. The crisis-torn country also witnessed a massive earthquake last month which killed over a thousand people, left thousands other homeless and brought the health system under huge strain. This has further impacted the lives of people, especially the minorities in Afghanistan. Observers say India's timely response to the minority crisis emerging out of the war-torn country can save dozens of lives. The government of India has maintained that it is committed to provide all forms of assistance to all minorities coming from war-torn country. India's amended Citizenship Act 2019 allows persecuted minorities from Afghanistan among a list of neighboring countries which can apply for country citizenship. Hence, the Sikh's decision to relocate to India is not a knee-jerk reaction, but a rational call considering all forms of future securities. Time now for Asia This Week. The stories from across the continent. China deployed scores of planes and fired live missiles near Taiwan this week in its biggest drills in the Taiwan Strait, 
a day after US House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a solidarity trip to the self-ruled island. China's military confirmed multiple firings of conventional missiles in waters of Taiwan as part of planned exercises in six zones. It activated more than 100 planes, including fighter jets and bombers and over 10 warships, state broadcaster CCTV said. Taiwan's defense ministry said it scrambled jets to warn away 22 Chinese fighter aircraft that crossed the Taiwan Strait median line into its air defense zone and said troops fired flares late on Thursday to drive away four drones that flew above the area of its Kinmen Islands of the southern eastern coast of China. It said missiles fired by China flew high into the atmosphere and constituted no threat to it, responding to public concern about whether they passed over the main island of Taiwan. A top general of the U.S. Army Pacific pledged in Indonesia to uphold a free and open Indo-Pacific after presiding over the opening ceremony of a joint military drill with the Southeast Asian nation. Named the Super Garud Shield, it is the biggest military training exercise ever hosted by two countries. At least 5,000 troops from 14 countries including Australia, Japan and South Korea are participating according to the Indonesian military. The military drills which run from August 1 to 14 are taking place amidst heightened tensions in East Asia with US House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan despite furious objections from Beijing. Itemitsi Kusan is an oil refining and oil chemical company in Japan. With the world's most urgent mission being carbon neutralization by 2050, Japanese firms like Idemitsu is trying to change their industrial constitution in order to become carbon neutral. ま、Idemitsu, through its endeavors, hopes to move forward in the direction of achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. Global warming is a serious problem around the world. This makes summers around the world much hotter than they should be. In Tokyo, different companies are slowly and steadily developing heat protection equipment and are coming up with a variety of ideas. This jacket looks like an ordinary suit jacket from the front. However, there is something which makes it unique. This jacket has two fans installed in the back. Clothes with patterns gives a cool look to the jacket. These prints are developed using a special printing technology and contains a cold element called xylitol. Heat stroke is a serious problem of summer season in Japan. Watch type sensor is designed to set an alarm by detecting core body temperature before getting heat stroke. The problems created by global climate change are being solved by introducing carbon neutral strategies and products like these that can help citizens beat the heat. Moving on. Hindu devotees in India and Nepal mark the festival of Nag Panchami with great devotion and fervor. Observed in the Hindu calendar month of Savan, snakes which are associated with the Hindu Lord Shiva are worshipped on this occasion. Devotees offer fruits and milk to deity and pray for well-being of all.
Hindu devotees across India flock to Shiva temples to celebrate the auspicious festival of Nag Panchami with religious fervor. Nag Panchami is a day dedicated to snakes and is celebrated every year on the 5th of the fortnight leading to the full moon during the holy month of Savan. There are various religious beliefs but the most popular one is that on this particular day Lord Krishna triumphed over Kaliya the most venomous snake marking the end of the serpent's reign of terror. हम लोग अपनी मनोकामनाएं पूरी करने के लिए हम लोग नागवास की दर्शन करने आते हैं नागपंचमी पे और यहां पे बहुत सारी मतलब लोगों की मन्नतें पूरी होती हैं इसलिए हम यहां पे दर्शन करने आते हैं और हर साल आते हैं हम लोग दर्शन करने On the day of Nag Panchami, devotees offer special prayers and feed milk to snakes. Many among them observe a fast throughout the day, and there is a general belief that feeding milk to snakes rids people of their problems. Moreover, farmers are also advised to avoid plowing or digging the earth on this auspicious occasion, as it could harm and anger the snakes which reside underneath. Meanwhile at Sri Mahakaleshwar temple in India's Ujjain city priest Bedit Shivling with ash performed special prayer and placed the statue of Sheshnag or serpent god in the temple Bhasma Ishtan ke pashchat bhagwan ko Shesh Narayan dharan karaya gaya Yehi Shesh ka darshan karna aaj ke din sabhi bhakton ke liye bada mahatvapurna hai In Nepal too, Nag Panchami is celebrated with great devotion. A large number of devotees visited the famous Nag Pokhri pond in capital Kathmandu to appease snakes and Lord Shiva with special offerings of milk, fruits, dubo grass, flowers with red vermilion powder. They were stunned to see a live monoclet cobra in a basket. brought by a snake charmer on the premises of Nag Pokhri coinciding with the festivity of the occasion to mai anandit hai mai le soche ko bhi thi na ki mai le aara aaj nag devta lai esari dudh khuaera mero hat bada dudh khuaunda heru waha le khanu huncha bhanne mai le soche ko bhi thi na eti anand aaye ki kurai nagarnus na sath sath nag devta Nag Panchami is also regarded as the festival to strengthen the bond between humans and nature. As per Hindu tales, it is believed that Lord Krishna was the cause of Kansa's end, who sent the snake to kill Lord Krishna. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.